Great things seem to be birthed out of the difficult times, such as the music of jazz. The coronavirus sparked the idea of COVID-19 jazz documentary that would focus on the history and the future of jazz. It appears that jazz is becoming a dying art, but before making a final conclusion, let's interview instrumentalist jazz saxophonist John Hine to discuss the hidden secrets of this great music called jazz. We also researched articles to uncover some truths about the jazz music industry. My first introduction to jazz music was just growing up in Chicago in a musical family. My mom especially played lots of great music, uh, Nat King Cole, um, Ray Charles, I mean, it just goes on and on. She had a great musical collection and she played the piano, you know, she played Boogie Woogie and all that. Um, but I wasn't really drawn into the pianos as much as I was to other instruments such as drums and all that. And, she didn't really, she kind of frowned on that because uh, I'm in a large family, you know, and, uh, you know, it's a noise maker. But my sister, my older sister, uh, she's an artist, Frida, uh, she got us involved with the Afro, um, Afro Arts Theater, Afro Arts Theater on the south side of uh, Chicago in the mid-60s. And she would take us to the Afro Arts Theater to see um, uh, the music, Phil Karan, uh, our ensemble, the dancers, the musicians, all the poets were there. It was like a renaissance, you know. And uh, I saw all of those trumpet players and flute players and drummers, and I really got excited. I was about 11 years of age, and this was in Chicago. And I really, I said, Ooh, I want to do that. And um, she got me uh, connected with a drummer, with a drummer who uh, was teaching me and my brother. But the problem was is that we had to catch two buses after school. It was, and uh, that kind of did, it kind of fizzled out. But uh, my interest stayed, and. Um, when I was in high school, I was about 14 years of age. Oh, my sister bought me my first saxophone when I, when I was 14. The same sister, Frida, and uh, she encouraged me, and um, you know, I played in the high school band. And uh, but I was always drawn to um, these melodies. I was hearing melodies in my mind, and a lot of uh, things that weren't weren't in the marching band. And I would hear records, and I would uh, make up songs. And I don't I don't really want to say that it was jazz because I didn't know what jazz was. <laughs> <laughs> but when I uh, got into college, uh, my professor, Jimmy Cheatham, at University of Madison, uh, he started talking real structured jazz, learning chords and scales and uh, songs, and I said, okay, all right. So that, that was formal jazz to me at that time. It, it started coming to me. And I've always been the type of person that I like playing in large groups, but I, I like to play also in the smaller groups where you have the freedom to improvise, and that's really, really the, my forte right there is improvisation. How has jazz influenced the church world? That's that's um, the, the the music in the church. Well, let me go all the way back to um, the early beginnings during slavery. During slavery. Uh, there were work songs, and there were uh, certain songs, certain calls that they had that meant things. Um, and in a sense, that was improvisation because they had to come up with songs and ways of communicating to one another that nobody could uh, know what they were um, doing or saying. It's like a secret code. And uh, from that, we have the, uh, the what they call the Negro spirituals, right? I don't like using that term, Negro, but they call it the Negro spirituals. And those went into the church, into the church. Um, in the early uh, days of the church, many of the musicians uh, were coming out of the church. They were coming into the church, uh, but not all. But, but, but several musicians uh, came into the church and out of the, out of the church. Uh, and I was, to I was told by some, and I've even heard this uh, in the music, that the blues developed uh, from gospel music. In fact, in the church, I sometimes hear the chords, especially the organs. I said, those are blues chords they're playing. <laughs> According to Encyclopedia Britannica, an article written by Gunther Schuller, a jazz historian stated this, jazz, musical form, often improvisational, developed by African Americans and influenced by European harmonic structure and African rhythms. It was developed partially from ragtime and blues and is often characterized by syncopated rhythms, polyphonic ensemble playing, varying degrees of improvisation, often deliberate deviations of pitch, 
and the use of original timbres. I would say in America, uh, jazz struggles in America, but worldwide, uh, jazz is thriving. Uh, you go in other, these other countries, uh, Australia, I was in Australia and I saw like jazz artists everywhere. Uh, they're uh, in Europe, uh, Japan, you know, it's, it's all over the world. Jazz is not a dying art. Uh, it's a challenging art. Uh, you, the the, the uh, artist has to spend several, several hours honing their craft. Uh, you got to know uh, the language of jazz. You have to know how to implement your ideas into a song. And you have to do it in a, man a manner that it's you. It has to be your expression from your heart, from your mind, from your being, uh, so that you don't sound like, uh, you don't come off sounding like other musicians. You have to be an artist. You got to be an individual. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what's going to really make you a, a true, a true musician is learning the language and then uh, putting it in your own way uh, of delivery. You have to deliver it in your own, from the heart. Uh, uh, about jazz and uh, to support this music, you, it, it was financial. You needed money. Now, blacks listened to a lot of jazz early on and danced to jazz. In fact, j jazz was a dance music. There were several uh, jazz dance bands. Uh, but then when the white people f caught on to it, for example, at the Cotton Club, uh, they had, had uh, you read about the Cotton Club, the, the, the all black performers but most of the audience was, was white on certain, you know, the, there, were, there were times when, when, when you would have the blacks in there, et cetera, but you gotta understand that during Jim Crow, they had mix. <laughs> so, uh, today, I find that, I don't know, it's a mystery, but uh, it's, it's an art form. Jazz is an American art form. And so I just find that my white friends, they seem to appreciate the arts more. It seems our people, have continued to develop other styles of music. We've gone off into the soul and the rap music, uh, so, so many other genres. Uh, uh, when I was with B.B. King, I didn't play with B.B. King, but I would, I would run into B.B. King uh, like in Madison or in Chicago, and uh, I attended his shows, and uh, I even was backstage with him. And his audience was, was pretty much, it was uh, about four black people in his audience, the whole place was packed out, and they just loved B.B. King. And, uh, He'd go down to Chicago, and of course it was a black audience there, but traveling the world, uh, it was predominantly white people that were supporting his music throughout. First of all, I don't like the term jazz. <laughs> I only use the term jazz because people identify with the word. But when you start breaking down, if you have to explain what jazz really is, it would take a long time to explain it because there are so many strands of jazz. You have. Uh, the music that originated, early jazz, the 1920s, you know, and you had Tin Pan Alley and all that that came off of that. And then you had the, uh, the bebop that came along in the 40s, and then uh, in the 50s, uh, uh, you started getting some acid jazz, started rolling in the 50s, uh, early 60s, and then you got the avant-garde jazz, and it's just so many different, uh, different um, I don't know, tributaries, if you will, of, of jazz. Uh, but Essentially, essentially, this music is com comprised of artists knowing their instrument of choice. Uh, uh, reading is very important, especially when you play with large groups. With a large group, you have to implement the reading for the, uh, 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 for the communication purpose. But with the small groups, such as a Coltrane combo, they didn't, they didn't really need uh, written music because they memorized. They, they wrote the music out and then they, they got rid of it because they memorized it. Because once they went into that zone of playing, uh, 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 once they close, they're going to close their eyes at some point, and they're into it. They're, you're, you're going on a journey. Um, but uh, just to bring it home, uh, you got you got highly skilled musicians. You have musicians who can improvise, which I will, I'll say something about that in a minute. I mean, they can they can speak the language uh, through their instrument and uh, communicate with one another and tell a story and and. Uh, uh, entertain an audience, okay? So you got to bring your audience into. Now, uh, the deeper you go, the smaller your audience gets. <laughs> and the uh, musicians have to understand that because, you know, the higher you go in life, the fewer friends you have. <laughs> and that's the way it is in jazz music because we go into a place sometimes that, that the music is so heavy and it's so intricate, and, you know, that the people, you lose the people because they don't, they don't understand it. <laughs> but those people who really understand jazz, 
They will stay all night long and hear you play. Yes, they will. According to Charles Waring, an article written for You Discover Music, we look back to a time when jazz was the dominant form of popular music and could be heard emanating from radio stations and concert halls all around the world. Nowadays, in the second decade of the 21st century, jazz may seem to many a marginalized music. Of course, it goes without saying that there are still musicians who have risen out of the jazz ghetto, crossed over and sold humongous amounts of records to the mainstream public. I want to say this, I listen to all instruments, various instruments. Now I'll tell you my big three in a minute, but I listen to keyboard players, I listen to brass, I listen to uh, woodwind players, percussion players, electronic players. I listen to all of them because what I'm listening to is, is what are they communicating and what can I learn from that uh, musician aesthetically? What can I add to my vocabulary? So I don't, I don't try to tune anybody out. Uh, if I listen to something and it's, and it's mundane and it's like, okay, it is capped and it's not really going any further than that, you know, if I feel like grooving, I groove with it for a while. But I mean, when it comes to really intent listening for learning, then, I, then it narrows down real fast. And I, and I go uh, listen to the people that innovated the jazz, uh, that it, it's like jazz is moving somewhere in history and all of a sudden it just turns a corner. One artist comes in and it like turns a corner. Wow, what is he doing? I want to check that out. What, how did he turn the entire world of jazz around? And then here, goes, here comes another artist, okay? And in between those artists, there's a lot of great musicians. There's a lot of great musicians, but it's too many for me to listen to all of them. And when I'm studying, I'm going to go to those that are helping me to um, get to the place I want to be. Now, let me say that uh, as an artist, because I know that I, I watched the interview on YouTube with, with Sonny Rollins was speaking, that, and he's a fantastic giant of a sax player. And he was saying that he still practices his instrument. And I don't know how old Sonny Rollins is, but he's not a young man. <laughs> he practices still. So all of your life as an artist, you always practice. Okay? Again, I keep coming back to John Coltrane. And then one that a lot of people don't know about or listen to is Eric Dolphy. I listen to the music of Eric Dolphy because Eric Dolphy was so, uh, he was such an artist. He uh, he uh, explored uh, the woodwinds, although he was like, I think his main instrument was the alto sax. He played the flute, he was phenomenal on the flute, and he was phenomenal uh, on the bass clarinet. Um, and when I talked to his parents back in the mid 80s, uh, they were still alive at the time. His mom was uh, telling me that Eric played the oboe. I never knew that. Uh, he played other instruments, and uh, he was a leader in his own right. And so he has uh, so many phenomenal techniques uh, that speak to me that have gone unexplored. Charlie Parker changed jazz, okay? I mean, things just more, more drastically than any instru instrumentalist ever in the history of jazz. So when I say Charlie Parker, I, that's probably every musician on the planet that's serious about playing. And that, that includes uh, people who play other instruments other than the saxophone. And uh, yeah, all music was changed with Charlie Parker. We turned the corner. I mean, we really turned the corner. Uh, but I do go back in history beyond him. I go back to Sidney Bechet, and I listen to uh, uh, musicians that uh, from around that time, even ragtime players. So, because they all have something to uh, contribute. My approach to jazz is very exploratory. And uh, what I mean by exploratory, I'm not looking for something that was not already there. Okay, so I have the basic language of jazz, the chords, the scales, the various intervals and nuances in jazz. But there's a song that's in my heart and in my mind that I don't hear. I don't hear it being played by other people and it's not like I'm trying to be different but I have, to, I have to go after the music that God has planted inside of me. And uh, uh, it's very exploratory. I have to do a lot of explore, exploration. So I'll, I'll work with a particular mode or scale and um, I'll work with the intervals until I find a particular sound. And then I'll repeat it over and over, 
over and over, transpose it to different keys, play it again, so that I incorporate it into my, uh, my song. I'm creating a song when I improvise. It's incorporated, okay? And then once it's incorporated, there's no need to me, for me to uh, explore that any further, and I'm looking for something else to add to that. Um, I, wrote, I wrote a book for myself, it's called Chord Scales and Diagram Approaches for Improvisation. And my wife convinced me to get it published. It's on Amazon. But most, of, well, I'm not going to say most, but a whole lot of my ideas are in that book. And uh, I've been working on a particular sound since 19, it came to me in 1984, 84. And it's, it's, it's highly developed now, but I'm still working, I'm building on it. So it's exploratory, but I, when I find the things that I'm looking for, I add them to my vocabulary, and I reach out and try to find something else. So it's never ending. All the modern music that's coming out has a foundation in jazz, gospel, and classical. Now some of this music that's coming out with this rap music uh, goes all the way back to Africa. And jazz music comes out of Africa too, because jazz was uh, formed be with uh, African rhythms and European harmonies. You know, there's some African scales in there too. Uh, but when you break it down to the raw bones, when you start doing rap with no instruments, just drums and beats, uh, you're going all the way back to Africa now. And uh, jazz has a great, a great future. It's a great future. Uh, what I'm hearing right now with my music, I'm hearing taking some of my music and put it to a uh, modern palette, a modern background, and just play over the top of it. You don't have to play everything, just really nice and light. And you know, you're on top already because you got all, the, all of the elements as a mu musician already. Okay, so a great future for the music we call jazz. Charles Warren confirms the finding, stating, though jazz music no longer rules the world, it remains a profoundly influential form of music and young lions such as Robert Glasper, Ambrose Akins Messiah, and Kamasi Washington, just like the mired hip hop acts that sampled jazz records in the 80s and 90s, have made an important contribution by bringing a new, younger audience back to jazz, which only bodes well for its future.